After staying here in Prague for only 4 days, I have to say we covered a lot of landmarks in this city. Well, mostly the old town. We walked around the old town square, which is what you see here, every day just to admire the astronomical clock and the church of Our Lady before 10. We even explored the old town section of the city. In other words, we saw a lot in just 4 days. But if you've been watching my videos, you know 4 days is not enough. We visited a lot of places, but we just passed by a majority of them, simply because we didn't have enough time to go inside. We were only able to explore inside a few landmarks. So if you're planning to visit Prague, I would say a week and a half, maybe two, should be enough to see everything here. Anyway, today we're going to fly to Athens, which is the capital and the largest city of Greece. But before we head to the airport, we're going to have our last meal here. And we decided to go back to this restaurant where I had that amazing roasted pork knee a few days ago. So it's our last day in Prague. And um, we checked out already. And, but our flight is going to be at 3 in the afternoon. And um, we're going to have lunch or our last uh, meal in Prague. And we're going to do it here. We're going to eat it here, I should say. So the first thing we ordered was a traditional garlic soup, which we're going to share. Then a side of green beans with bacon, the roasted aubergine or eggplant, and some fries just for good measure. As for me, I ordered the grilled sausages, even though it's not a main dish. And for her, she ordered a big Xander fish, which we both never heard of. The day before, I tried tea with honey and lemon, and I really liked it a lot, so I ordered it again. I'm not sure where this combination originated, but it seems really popular here, although I think they add some milk to it, which I don't like. Anyway, as we were waiting for our food, I noticed our bread came with this. I'm guessing it's butter, but I'm not really sure. I think it could be some kind of special spread they have here, so I decided to give it a try. I'm pretty sure there's butter in this, but the consistency is more like paste. I never had anything like this before. It had a strong taste of garlic, which I really like. I mean, it could be some kind of garlic spread, but it's really different. So this is the traditional garlic soup. We ordered this soup because we had it here before, and we both liked it a lot. We just had to order it again. You see, garlic soup is one of Czech Republic's traditional soup. It's also popular in many countries such as Spain, France, Poland, Slovakia, and Mexico. But they all have different ways of making it. Here in the Czech Republic, they simply add potatoes, croutons, and cheese with the broth. I've read that this soup is commonly consumed here when you have a hangover. But I don't need a hangover to have this. The flavor was just amazing. It's not too garlicky, and the cheese and croutons combines perfectly with the broth. It's really good. So moving on, here's the grilled sausages I ordered. By the way, like I said, this is not a main dish. I believe it's one of the appetizers. I ordered this because I was kind of craving some sausage, but I'm not sure what kind of sausages they are. Honestly, I was expecting a variety of sausages, but clearly it's just one kind, and it's sitting on top of sauerkraut. Oh, as always, it came with horseradish and mustard as a dip. I don't really like the horseradish, but the mustard really works well with this. The green beans with bacon is pretty straightforward. There's nothing really fancy about this, but it still looks pretty good. I only ordered this because I realized I haven't had enough vegetables since we started this trip. With that in mind, we got the roasted eggplant as well. You know, it kind of reminds me of ratatouille when I first saw this. Although I've never had ratatouille before, but I think it's made with the same ingredients you see here. Maybe except for that goat cheese sitting on top, which I thought it was tofu at first. But looking at this, you can see the eggplant is sliced thinly with tomatoes. It's also sprinkled with some kind of seeds and what looks like soy sauce and basil sauce spread all over it. The presentation, I have to say, makes it look really good, but we both like eggplant, so I already know we're going to like this. Finally, we have the baked Xander fish you ordered. First of all, the presentation looks really nice. You can see two slices of fish stacked on top of each other, sitting on some kind of sautéed vegetables underneath, looking so savory. Anyway, I just found out that Xander is a freshwater fish that's very popular here in Europe. In fact, in Poland and in some other European countries, this fish is considered a delicacy and expensive because it's very difficult to catch. Oh, and almost forgot the french fries, which is always good and pairs pretty much with anything. So the first thing I'm going to try are the sausages. I don't like peppers, so I'm not going to even try it. But looking at the sausages, to me it looked dry and not juicy at all. I'm not sure where the oil is coming from, but cutting through it, the inside part is definitely dry and the outer skin is somewhat crispy. The sausage turned out really good, although it's a bit dry but it's nice and flavorful and the combination with the sauerkraut with that vinegary taste complements the sausage perfectly and adding the mustard balances everything together. I really liked it. 
not to try the green beans. Like I said, there's nothing really special about this, maybe except for the bacon, but it's actually pretty good. The flavor of the bacon really stands out. It's nice and savory. It takes the boring out of the green beans. I can definitely eat this all day. Next is the roasted eggplant. I have to say the eggplant and tomatoes look really fresh. I had to make sure I get everything on my plate, including the goat cheese. So the eggplant and tomatoes were definitely fresh. I could taste a hint of smokiness on the eggplant, but the goat cheese for sure brought out that sweet, bitter, and that amazing flavor to it. Okay, maybe the basil and whatever that black sauce is helped too, but the goat cheese was really a good touch on this. It's nice and crisp on the outside and soft and creamy on the inside. I can eat this all day as well. Moving on is the Xander fish. She cut a piece for me so I could try it. The fish with its skin looks somewhat juicy. She said that what really makes this dish are the sautéed vegetables it came with. Alright, let's try the fish. This is the fish. I don't know what kind of type of fish this is though. So. Mm. I have to agree with her, the vegetables were really good. On the other hand though, the fish didn't have a distinct taste to it like salmon or mackerel. Actually, if I didn't know what it was, I could have easily mistaken this for cod or any white fish, but it was tender and perfectly cooked. So as I continued eating, I remember this sauce. It's the same sauce I had with the roasted pork meat I had here a few days ago. It paired so good with the pork, I figured it's gonna be good with the sausages as well. And it did. You know the funny thing is that I just looked up the sauce, and I found out that it's actually just soy sauce. I don't know, it doesn't taste like a regular soy sauce. I'm pretty sure it's mixed with something, or it has some kind of special blend. Either way, it's really good. So after trying the sausage, the green beans, the eggplant, and xander fish, I would say the fish was the best, followed by the sausage and eggplant. Oh, and speaking of the eggplant, I noticed that the goat cheese had some kind of bread or biscuit underneath it. I wasn't able to taste it at all. I just saw it while we were finishing up the plate. Anyway, for dessert, we both ordered vanilla ice cream, which was a little disappointing. I don't know if this was some kind of a special ice cream, but they could have at least given us a little bit more. I mean the ice cream was good, but it was just not enough. So after lunch, we realized we had a lot of time to kill before catching our flight to Greece. So we decided to go see Charles Bridge for the last time. Alright, um, after brunch, or yeah, brunch, we came back to um, Charles Bridge, um, our last uh, walk here. It's really close to our hotel, but um, after this, we're just gonna go walk the Charles Bridge a little bit, uh, taking the sights, and um, I'm gonna miss this place actually, because this is our last day. Um, we're gonna go to, that's the castle right there, by the way. We're gonna go uh, back to our hotel, and then um, get an Uber, and go to the airport, and fly to Greece, yeah. So that's it. We're just gonna enjoy the bridge right now. We walked across the bridge for a few minutes and all I can think about is if I'll ever come back here again. There's just something special about Prague for me. Even if you don't know anything about its history, the city makes you feel like it's gone through a lot. It's simply beautiful. Anyway, we walked back to our hotel to get our things and grabbed an Uber to the airport which only took about 20 minutes from our hotel. If you're wondering, the Uber only cost us about $16 from the old town to the airport. I've heard about taxis here overcharging people, so it's probably a good idea to take an Uber if you're going to visit Prague. Well, at least so far for us, our experience using Uber here in Europe has been amazing. It's not only convenient, but the Uber drivers are all friendly too. I really hope they never get rid of it. Okay, it's like the border, border, really border. You know Dresden? No, I drove, I probably drove there. Anyway, when we arrived at the airport, we found out that our flight got delayed. Our flight got a little delayed. We were delayed by like one hour. And that's our plane right there. The flight from Prague to Athens took about three hours. And since our flight was delayed, we arrived in Athens late at night. I believe it was close to 11 when we got out of the airport. And so far when we exited the building to get an Uber, the first impression that I got is how similar it felt to the Philippines. I don't know what it is. It could be the humidity or the faint smell of cigarettes and car fumes, but it definitely gave me that impression. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just compared to Prague, Athens felt totally different. So we're in uh, Greece now, and um, we're just gonna look, get our taxi or Uber and then go straight to our hotel. Now let me talk about the Uber here. Even though we're still using the Uber app, 
somehow it still gave us a local taxi. See, I didn't know it at that time, but Uber doesn't really exist here in Greece. I just found out that Taxis uses the Uber app to pick up customers. Anyway, from the airport to our hotel, like in Prague, it's also about 20 minutes away, but it cost us about $43 here. You see on the app, it said it's about $30, but the driver charged us with what he said is a standard price, which was a few dollars more than the meter he had running on the taxi. Anyway, because of this, it's really hard to trust taxis, because first, you know they charge too much, and second, you just always feel like you're about to be scammed. Nevertheless, since they don't have Uber here, we'll just suck it up and take the taxi throughout our stay here. We really don't have any choice. I guess the most important thing is that we made it to our hotel safely. This is my room, and I'm gonna go in. In Greece, Athens. Okay, Let's see what it looks like. Wow. Wow, look at this. It's huge. Hold on, before I go to the bedroom, there's like a little living room here and there's a kitchen. Look at this. Is your room the same? Let's see what's here. Oh, it's a little fridge. It has nothing in here except water. But, um, Pretty nice. I, I get a sink. Never had that before. This is the bedroom. It's nice. It's, I mean, it's kind of old. You can just see from the walls that it's not new. But the this whole place is huge. It's pretty big. This is the bathroom. Check out this bathroom right here. Oh, not bad. Oof. At least I have a window. The first two didn't have windows. Okay. I thought that was like not in service, but it just says disinfected. The room is not bad. I like it. I like it. Look at that. I just, I love this spot right here. Check out the, the view on that window. There's a view? Alright, I'm gonna check out the view on my window right here. Okay, let's see. What the f <laughs> What the hell? It's a f It's a wall. Oh my god, that's... This is the view through this window. Yep, that's the view to my window. Pretty much nothing. Anyway, we're here in Athens now, and it's about 11:30 11, 11 at night. And um, we're gonna head out. And um, they said it's really safe here. They eat until two in the morning, but um, we haven't had dinner yet. So after we unpack, we're gonna go down and look for something to eat. All right. I guess um, I didn't check this. There's a balcony right here. Oh. It's nice. I think I can go out here. No, I can't. I can't go out. Oh, you can. There's chairs. We'll check it out tomorrow. But, um, I'm hungry. Uh, let's go out. So um, we ended up right here. It's just right next to our hotel, this restaurant. We're gonna try it out. That restaurant was closed, so we ended up coming here. Uh, we just spotted this when we are just walking. It's it. Our hotel is right here. That end, that corner is our hotel. And this restaurant is right next to our hotel. So we're gonna have dinner here. I was worried since we arrived here really late that we might not find a place to eat. But after talking to the receptionist in our hotel, he said that most restaurants here closes at 2 in the morning. So after scanning the menu, I decided to order the grilled squid. And for her, she ordered the seafood dish. We're not sure what it is, but the ingredients in it seem really good. And as for our starters, we ordered the zucchini balls. While we were waiting for the food, our waiter gave us this. It's definitely a shot of something. I wasn't able to ask what it was, but they also gave us some olives. We didn't order this drink by the way, they just gave it to us for free. 
It had a strong smell of alcohol, but it's not vodka or any drink I know. I'm pretty sure it's a popular drink here in Greece. I actually looked it up, and I'm assuming it's this drink called Auzo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's the most common and widely consumed drink here in Greece since the 19th century. It's pretty strong, and it definitely has its own unique taste. I'm just not sure how to describe it, but having it with olives helps chase the alcohol flavor away. Anyway, with our meal, we ordered a bottle of white wine. See, we've been drinking beer all throughout Dublin and Prague, so we thought of changing it up to drinking some wine. After all, we're having seafood, so it's just a perfect drink for it. It's nice that our waiter asked me to try it first. You know, I wonder if they still charge us for it if I didn't like it. I've never had that happen to me before, and I don't even know if I'd had the guts to refuse it anyway. Well, maybe if it tasted like Chardonnay, I might. But fortunately, the wine was good. So this is the seafood dish she ordered. Like it said on the menu, it's orzo cooked with fresh mussels, squid, and shrimp. Orzo or risoni is basically pasta shaped like rice. Looking at this, it's hard not to think of risotto because it looks almost exactly like the one we had in Rome. If you didn't know, risotto is a traditional Italian dish made of rice that's cooked with butter or cheese to make it creamy. And this is probably the Greek version of risotto. The only difference is, is that it's made with pasta instead of rice. Although this dish is her food, she was nice enough to have me try it first because she knows I'm doing all this vlogging thing. Well, the first thing I want to say is how amazing the smell was. It smelled like fresh seafood cooked in butter. The flavor I remember after that first bite was sweet and tangy, mixed with that seafood flavor. It was perfectly intense. Everything about this dish, from the sauce to the fresh seafood, they all blended together into this perfect flavor. She asked me how it was, and all I can tell her was that it was really amazing, and she had to try it. You know, I'm not sure if this is a traditional Greek dish, but being the first dish we had here was a great start. It's really hard to beat this right now. I would even go as far to say that it's better than the risotto we had in Italy. I mean, the one in Italy was good too, but this one is just way better. The flavor of the sauce was just amazing. Anyway, moving on is the zucchini balls. I've read that this is a traditional Greek dish, which is famous throughout Greece. It originated on a Greek island called Crete. It's made of zucchini, feta cheese, garlic, green onions, herbs, and eggs. And as you can see, it's all mixed and formed into a ball, then deep fried. So the texture of the zucchini balls was really soft. It had a little crunch on the outer layer, but generally it's soft. It's probably because of all the feta cheese melted inside. And as you can see, the zucchini is kind of mashed in with the cheese. I was looking for some kind of dipping sauce, but I guess they just serve it as it is. The flavor, I have to say, was good. You can really taste the cheese, but the zucchini was a little lost in it. Well, zucchini doesn't really have a strong flavor anyway, but speaking of the texture, it was okay. It would have been perfect if the outer layer had more crunch to it. You know, even though this was fried, it's not that greasy at all. I can see why it's popular here. The only issue I have with this is that it needs some kind of dip. And I'm thinking of that creamy garlic sauce they use for shawarma called tomb. Now I think that would have been perfect for this. Finally, the grilled squid I ordered. This dish is very straightforward. It's grilled squid served with caramelized onions and organic fava. You can pretty much find grilled squid served all over the world. Well, mostly countries that's known to be surrounded with a lot of seafood, like in Asia or in our case, Greece. But aside from the squid and the onions, the fava is kind of new to me. It's basically fava beans pureed or blended together with onions, garlic, olive oil, and a dash of paprika. It's kind of like hummus. Anyway, I sprinkled some lemon on the squid first before anything else. Like the Greek risotto, this dish smelled really good. You can really smell the grilled smokiness coming from the squid. So the squid was a little overcooked, but it still had some tenderness to it. You know, for me, you can't really beat the flavor of the grill. I mean, it could be lobster, fish, steak, or even sausage. That grill flavor is just something else. And grilled squid is one of my favorite food. I really love it. It's almost impossible to mess it up, and eating it with the caramelized onions and the fava raises the flavor even more. The fava, I honestly didn't know what it was at that time. Well, it had a hint of hummus, but the flavor was just different. Maybe the onions had something to do with it. Oh, and it kind of had that same texture as mashed potatoes. All in all, everything on this dish was amazing. The zucchini balls was nice and cheesy. The squid had that perfect grilled flavor to it. And that fava with that hint of hummus balances all the flavors. They all worked well together in my opinion. But the best dish here for me, I have to say, is the Greek risotto she ordered. Everything about it was just amazing. 
The flavor from the squid, the shrimp, the mussels mixed with that sauce. And then it's all put together with the orzo. What else can I say? I guess you just have to try it if you're here. So for dessert, we had this. This is called profiterole, if I'm pronouncing that right. Or cream puff stuffed with vanilla ice cream and then drenched with hot chocolate sprinkled with nuts, I think. You know, I haven't mentioned it yet, but the people who works at this restaurant are all friendly and welcoming. You see, we didn't plan to have dessert, but they gave us this for free. The manager probably appreciated how I filmed every meal they served us, but either way, they were all nice here even before I started filming. Anyway, I've had cream puffs before, but nothing like this. The ice cream inside was nice and hard, but you can barely see the pastry it's encased with. And that hot chocolate, now that's a lot of chocolate. So the ice cold vanilla ice cream and the hot chocolate, temperature wise, somehow works perfectly together, just like the fondant we had in Prague. But the chocolate wasn't sweet at all. I'm assuming it's dark chocolate. And because of that, it kind of drowned out the flavor of the ice cream. So the flavor was a little bitter and it needed some serious sweetness to it. You know, if they didn't put too much chocolate, I think it would have been good. Well, even though I didn't like it, we still finished it. I mean, we had to because they gave it to us for free. But despite that, we really had an amazing experience here. So definitely we'll be coming back again. Okay, so I'm back at my, ho my room in our hotel. And that food, I know I can't talk because of the music. I had to cut it out, so I had to do narration for it. But the food was just amazing. If you would have heard what we were talking about, uh, describing the food on the spot, it was just amazing. Uh, I'm full. But um, yeah, they gave us the last uh, dessert for free. Um, that was just um, out of the blue. And then at the end, the guy was like, so are you gonna come back? And we're like, yeah, sure, of course, we're gonna come back. But anyway. Um, tomorrow, uh, it's going to be a big day. Um, since we came here, we're all, it's already 1, I think, in the morning. So we have to wake up really early tomorrow. Because it's going to be a very big day. Because um, we're supposed to stay here in Athens for four days. But instead, um, we cut it. Because the last two days, we're going to go to Santorini. Uh, on the last minute. We just decided to do that since we're here. So we are only have two full days in Athens basically and tomorrow is like a big day because we're gonna go to Acropolis where we're gonna see the Parthenon is that right? Parthenon yeah anyway so yeah so that's the end of the day take a shower <laughs>